How does Dickinson's text structure contribute to the poem's overall meaning? In this lesson, you will learn how a theme is developed by analyzing an author's choices concerning how to structure a text. You have read the poem Because I Could Not Stop for Death at least once. This poem was written by Emily Dickinson and was published in 1890. We have learned that this poem is not about a literal carriage ride. In the poem, Dickinson's personified character, Death, takes the speaker on a carriage ride from life to death to eternity. So let's review. When poets sit down to write, they usually start with a big idea that they want to communicate to others. Then they must make decisions about what the best way is to communicate these ideas. This can include the way a poem is organized, how it will look on the page and sound to the ear, and the subjects and ideas that will be included in the poem. Today, we're going to be answering our question about how an author's text structure choices contribute to the overall meaning of a poem. We're going to use these four steps to guide us. First, we will reread the poem, paying attention to the way that the poem is structured. Then we'll ask ourselves, does this poem follow a specific poetic form? Next, we'll ask ourselves, does this poem follow a specific pattern of text organization? And finally, we'll review our notes and ask ourselves, what theme do these decisions about text structure support? So, how does Dickinson's text structure contribute to the poem's overall meaning? Well, let's look back at the poem in general, but we'll also eventually focus on stanzas 3 and 5. So as we reread the poem, we need to make sure we are paying attention to the way the poem is structured. So in the back of my mind, I need to be thinking about the ideas in the poem, how those ideas are organized, and also if the poem has a certain appearance or tone. So we've done quite a bit of work with this poem, but now we need to think about what poetic form this poem takes. I want to begin by thinking about the ideas that are in the poem we know from previous study that this poem focuses on the speaker's carriage ride with death and the things she sees and experiences along the way. I also want to think about the tone this poem takes. Though the subject is death, this poem doesn't have a fearful or foreboding tone. We've already said that it has a peaceful, steady, relaxed tone. So what poetic form would best match the ideas and tone of this poem? Well. An elegy is written to honor or mourn someone who has died. Our poem is about death, but is it honoring or mourning someone who is dead? Is that the point of Because I Could Not Stop for Death? Not really. Most elegies have a serious, mournful tone to them. Our poem isn't really serious or mournful, so maybe this isn't an elegy. What about a lyric poem? Lyrics are relatively short and are written about a deep emotional feeling or idea. So I guess the tone of a lyric would depend on the subject of the poem. It might be very enthusiastic or passionate or angry or joyous. So is our poem a lyrical poem? Well, Because I Could Not Stop for Death does share a deeply personal idea about death and its tone definitely matches the way the author feels, relaxed, peaceful, and steady. Also, it is a relatively short poem, so maybe. But let's check out one more form just to make sure. Pastoral poems idealize nature and country life. Their tone tends to be idealistic. So is our poem about nature and country life? It contains some references to nature, the grain, the sun, the dew, but it's not about nature. And I definitely don't think that the tone is idealistic. It's not making death sound too good to be true. So. No, I don't think our poem is a pastoral poem. So we've confirmed it. Our poem is a lyrical poem. Okay, so now that we know what poetic form this poem takes, we need to think about how the text is organized in the poem. We need to ask ourselves if this poem follows a specific text organization. So let's look at some specific types of text organization and see what matches. Let's start with cause and effect. Does this poem describe a cause and effect? We know because I could not stop for death is about death. But do we know what caused it? And is there really an effect from death? It's difficult to tell where life and death end and where the other begins. So I don't really think that this is cause and effect. What about chronological order? Does this poem begin with the first event that would have happened in real life, progress step by step to the last event that would have happened in real life? 
The poem does start out with the speaker being picked up in a carriage by death. The third stanza describes what the speaker and death can see as they go on their carriage ride. And by the fifth stanza, the carriage pauses at the grave. And the very last stanza discusses eternity. Also, in previous study, we learned that stanza three is full of symbolism that describes the typical life cycle. These things suggest that the poem is using chronological order. But let's just double check one more type of organization before we decide. What about compare and contrast? Is the poem working to show us how two things are similar to and different from one another? I guess the two main subjects of this poem would be life and death. So does this poem show us how life is different from death? I don't really see anywhere where Dickinson shows us a sharp divide between the two. They don't even feel that different to me. So I think we have to eliminate compare and contrast as an option. I think we can agree that this poem does use chronological order. So if we look back over on our notes about the text structure of this poem, we see that it's a lyric, lyric poem, meaning it expresses a deep emotional feeling or idea about death. We also agreed that it follows chronological order, meaning that it starts with the first event that would happen in real life, progresses step by step through more events, and ends with the last event that would happen in real life. It doesn't skip around, it doesn't have a flashback, it doesn't have foreshadowing. We also need to remember the two themes in this poem that we identified earlier. Death is not something we should fear, and life and death are a continuous journey. I need to think about which of these themes is best supported by the evidence we found about text structure. Well, the fact that this is a lyrical poem could work with the idea that death shouldn't be feared. This seems to be a deep belief of Dickinson's, and we know that lyric poems traditionally express deep beliefs. But the chronological order aspect of the poem supports the second theme, the idea that life and death are a continuous journey. Hmm, maybe the text structure of this poem actually supports both themes. Okay, so let's go back and see if we can answer today's question. How does Dickinson's text structure contribute to the poem's overall meaning? So here's how I think I would answer this question. This poem is written in chronological order, starting with death, picking the speaker up in his carriage, progressing through all the events of the life cycle, and ending with death and eternity. This supports the theme that life and death are a continuous journey. Dickinson used the lyric style because lyric poems are traditionally used to express personal and very emotional feelings. Using the lyrical form allows Dickinson to illustrate her positive feelings about death. By using chronological order and lyrical form, Dickinson blends her two themes. Death is not to be feared, and life and death are a continuous journey. To create an additional theme, life and death are not two mutually exclusive things. So here are the steps that we took to get to the answer of our question today. First, we reread the poem, paying attention to the way the poem was structured. Then we asked ourselves, does this poem follow a specific poetic form? Next, we asked ourselves, does this poem follow a specific pattern of text organization? And finally, we reviewed our notes, asking ourselves, what theme do these decisions about text structure support? In this lesson, you have learned how a theme is developed by analyzing an author's choices concerning how to structure a text.